the human race uh, between the years 2015 and 17 will be uh, globally aware that there are extraterrestrials. What, what do you think about that? It's not decided yet, but this is something which has even surprised me lately. Is because of coming down here to begin with, it was understood that we would never reveal who we are. Never. I mean, never ever even interact with each other. We would be going so deep into the program that that would never be something which was revealed. And we were anticipating the human race would not expand to the degree that they were a match to even desiring that information. After all, they continue to make these movies where we're blowing them up. It was never going to be something, the, the, the reveal program, basically. But now, because of the incredible expansion which has taken place, humanity is far ahead of where we figured they would be at this particular point in time. Uh, uh, when, you are say, when you are saying we, uh, which race are you referring to? Extraterrestrials. Uh, which ones? Arcturians, Pleiadians, Syrians, Lyrians, and then a few others that aren't really playing as much of a role. How many other of uh, ET races are third dimensional? Uh, almost every one of them. They just, it's an option. That's the difference. For most humans, it's not really an option at this point to be physical or non-physical. Their only access to non-physical stuff is when they're sleeping at night, and then they're not conscious of it. The highest vibratory beings that are interacting with humans are the Lyrans. They exist in a 10th and 11th dimensional reality. That's ridiculous. Arcturians are 6th dimensional reality. In a 6th dimensional reality, we have no physical bodies anymore. It's now a choice to be physical. But, like, let's say that over on my planet, we Arcturians live in a six dimensional reality. We don't use names. Arcturians watch a lot of sports, soccer specifically. Well, the Arcturian race, right? The Arcturian race has an embodiment, a physical embodiment, which is not compatible with nitrogen at all. Now, placing them in an, in an environment where there's high levels of nitrogen, which there are on this particular planet, is a lot like putting a slug in salt. It would evaporate. Bam. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. All the world is waiting for you. And the power you possess. In your satin tights. Fighting for your rights. And the old red, white, and blue. So are you speaking in behalf of all of, all of them? Or... All right. So, we, you know how there's a Greenpeace? Uh, Greenpeace is the organization. <laughs> yes. And you know how there are black people and white people and Mexicans and. <laughs> Let's just say that there are is also there's a few of them, but there's also some organizations out there that exist for multiple races are a part of them. Multiple extraterrestrial races are a part of these same organizations. Mm -hmm. And their main aim is to aid the expansion of whatever race is in the process of expanding. And the humans have given them a great many names. The Galactic Federation is basically the biggest one. It's what most people have interaction with. Intergalactic Greenpeace. It sounds so incredibly like sci-fi, but um, it is. where was I going with that? Uh, so I represent an organization like the Galactic Federation. It's basically a. It would be more similar to what the humans nowadays are calling the the Order of Light. Probably like thirteen of us came down into physical reality all with different roles to play. This time, for lack of sounding egotistical, I am the key player. I'm the reason that most of them are even here, is because, you know, I, there was backup plans just in case I didn't get out of my... Okay, so for a long time, when I projected forth the idea that I was going to come down here for this purpose, my the success rate was so low for me getting out of the situation when I was younger mm -hmm. that... 
I wasn't, it wasn't, the, the trip wasn't approved, basically, for years and years and years. We don't keep years, humans do. They're human years, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And then they put in place all kinds of um, just-in-case-she-doesn't-get-out type stuff. So I was sent down here with a great many people in different places on the globe, just in case, you know, never really even came to fruition. But now I know them all. And now we're... Some of them are doing spiritual teachings as well and influencing so humanity in other ways, but... One is in Australia, one is in Canada, one's in French Canada, which is kind of the Quebec area. Um, another one it, right now is actually here in Utah, but that's because I'm here. Um, okay, I've got that four. One of them is down in Brazil right now. One has decided to fly down to Uruguay. Seven. The other one... I don't know what I'm on. Oh, one's in Mexico. <laughs> one's not even born yet. It's on its way. Oh, okay. And then one of them is leaving from here to go to Australia to join the other one. And so when we come down, we usually choose to go into the trenches, which is why I live where I do. It's amazing that she's able to like get up each day because it's painful. The Greys and the Reptilians. It's a reason why many of us are here, also. So I want you to think about it this way. Let's pretend that you're part of Greenpeace and there are whaling ships around and your favorite animal is whales. So you come down and you take your whaling ship and you put them in between the whalers and the whale. A lot of us who are, you know, Arcturians, Pleiadians, Syrians, Lyrans, especially, we're kind of doing that with the greys and the reptilians. The way that the reptilians and greys squeak their way in to human experience is by humans getting into the vibration of victimhood. So if humans, especially in rural places, meaning out in the wilderness, if they get themselves into a space of victimhood, then they're a match to abduction. Mm -hmm. And we can't interfere with it. Why? Because it's considered an invitation. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. See, humans are the only ones that understand victimhood. In the rest of the universe, if you are thinking thoughts that feel like victimhood to you, you're a match to it. You've invited it. So why would I interfere in somebody asking for it? The human isn't aware they're asking for it, but they are, vibrationally. So they can do whatever they want with that. So what is our only recourse? Our only recourse is to teach people how to raise their frequency enough to not be in the victim vibration and thus not be a match to it. And if a, if a human being got themselves to a high enough vibration where they did not even perceive victimhood, then they could never be a match to the experience of a great or a reptilian. I mean, let's be honest. In the universe, humanity is not really viewed with such fabulous eyes. This is the reason that reptilians have the opinion about you that they do. Uh. 
Well, watch them. My God, they're killing cows like they keep them in little cages. They tie them to the floor. What You're telling me this is an advanced species which should be allowed to live? So if you have an interaction with a, with something that looks physical, that's reptilian, it's not the actual thing. It's a holographic image. But they are able to project forth a holographic image, which you can perceive which with enough clarity, basically, that it will feel solid to you. Mm -hmm. So it's a 3D hologram. Mm -hmm. 